What's he doing now? What's this contraption? Welcome back to the channel guys. Off the cuff video. I was messing around with something this morning and I thought I'd just kind of share it. So for those of you who've been watching my videos for a while, you know last year I actually did something with um, these little things, these little heaters. So this is like a, a battery powered heater. This is a new one, I haven't shown the video before. It's not really a new one, it's just a hack together job. But basically we've got a drill battery on the top and then we've got like a um, sort of, I don't know what these are, I think it's like 24 volt or 12 volt heater. It's got a little fan at the back of it. It's pretty high RPM and it basically just blows air through these two PTC elements and then it just heats up the air. So it's a quite a simple thing. Now this is a 18 volt drill battery um, and this has got 25R Samsung cells in, so pretty high power cells, and they can kick out about 20 amps. So this isn't gonna run for long like this, but it will actually provide quite a decent bit of heat. And how I connect it up, because it's still actually a drill pack, it's still a working drill pack, I use it on that angle grinder over there, that one, it's a bad boy, that thing. I just used one of these, I just grabbed it from Amazon, it's like a USB charger, which plugs into your drill pack. So, I mean, that's gonna provide your phone with a load of power, but what I did is just took it apart and just soldered some big fat wires onto the um, onto the terminals up here. So, it still works as a USB charger, but when you actually slide it on here, you get a load of hot air coming out, just like my mouth. And there's a little LED on the back as well. I don't know if this will flash or something when it gets down to low power. That'd be quite interesting. So I've got this switch on the side which doesn't actually turn it on and off. What it does is just flicks one of these elements on and off. So basically you can have one element or two elements. If you put two elements on, it's gonna draw a hell of a lot of power and probably kill this battery very, very quickly. But I'm not actually sure the exact current. So I'm gonna check that and just see you know, what it actually goes up to. So this was just a little five minute job. I wanted to get one of these heaters working again because I'd taken all the other ones apart. The ones I made in the other video, I've taken them apart, I've used them for different things, used the batteries for different stuff over the summer. So I just wanted to get one working again for the Twizzy. But I've come up with this, I just stuck that on the top of there. And what you can do is just stick it on top of the Bosch charger and then it's just gonna charge up. The limitation with this thing is when this battery gets down to a dangerously low point, it's not gonna cut off, it's just gonna carry on going until this hits zero. So you've gotta be really careful if you do this. I might see if I can find some sort of, um, not BMS, but something that will cut it out um, when the voltage gets too low or something like that if I wanna carry on. But yeah, I thought I'd share that with you guys because the videos from the other battery powered heaters, the other ones I did last year, I think it was, they've been getting loads of views now. I think it's because maybe, you know, it's getting colder and everyone's searching battery powered heaters and there's still nothing commercially available, which is surprising, really. So we can rig this up with this amp clamp and just see how much current it is it's actually drawing. Stick it on DC amps, zero it, this thing's going a bit funny. And then um, put it on that negative terminal there, zero it, zero it again. I think that's had it, this thing. And then fire it up. There you go. Whoa. I mean, that's kicking out some current. So 20 amps. I mean, that is going down there because it's heated up. But it's going down quite a lot. 16 amps. I mean, that's fine for like, the plenty of heat coming out of there, guys. Plenty of heat. So, I mean, 16 amps, it's probably 17 volts or something. So what would that be? I need to get a calculator. But that's 16 amps going out on there. If you put it on the higher power setting, you hear the fan drop. No, 30 amps, that's going well too high. So realistically, this battery could probably put out about 40 amps, but I'm not sure about these cables. And then when it's done, slap it back on the charger. There's a hell of a lot of power in all these sort of new drill packs. And I've actually noticed that Audi, the supermarket, not the car maker, of actually doing um, 20 volt and 40 volt batteries. So this is like a hybrid battery, it can do both, 20 or 40 volts. Don't ask me how they do it, I think it's to do with how this battery attaches to the um, to the different appliance it's connected to. It will do 20 volts or 40 volts. So it's like 20 volts at five amps or 40 volts at 2.5 amps, amp hours, something like that. So basically there's 10 cells in there and it's 10 cells of Samsung cells, 25R I believe, which are insane, that's what's in there and they can kick out 20 amps per cell. So I'm gonna go and investigate my local store in a minute and see if they've got any of these, because 30 quid for one of them batteries and then, what, 10 pound for one of these fans, you've got yourself a nice little heater. for a little car. Oh, it looks like it's over there. Tools, 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 where are they? Well, here we go. There's a 20 volt battery. Have they got any of the 20? Oh my God. Have they got any of the 20 40s? Yeah, they have right at the back. 
looks like it. Oh, I'm going to rip the entire display. Oh, no. Right, I'm going to tidy this up. Don't worry, guys, I'm going to tidy this up. Here it is then. 20, 40 volts, 5 amp hour or 22.5 amp hour, so parallel series switching. Samsung cells as well, look. Let's get one, see what they're like. I'll tell you what, it's just damn good, this thing. It really is kicking out some heat. That's proper warming my hands up. Here it is then. So it looks like a pretty nicely made bit of kit, actually. It's made in Germany, so I don't know whether that means it's good or not. But the first thing I've noticed on here is we've got this B1-B2 minus, B1 plus B2 minus. So I'm presuming it's split into two packs of 5S. Let's find out. So yeah, battery one minus and battery one plus 17.68. And then if you move across to battery two minus and battery two plus, the same. So I'm presuming here that if you linked that one and that one, you'd get 36 volts or 40 volts out of here. So that'd be like a 10S 1P, 2500 milliamp hour, so 2.5 amp hour. And then if you were to parallel these two and these two together, that would give you a 5S 2P at 5000 milliamp hours or five amp hours. So that's how they're getting their multiple configurations. Pretty simple really. But what I want to know is how they handed in the sort of BMS side of it, because this is two separate packs in effect. So is there any circuitry in here? So we need to rip this apart. Oh yeah, typical Germans held together by Torx screws. I don't think you can see them in there. Got my Torx thing, but it ain't long enough. Well, uh, might work. I'm probably gonna end up rounding it off if I do that. It turns out they weren't very tight at all, so that's at least something. No. Whoa. Weren't expecting that. Okay then, I'll take what I said about it being made in Germany back. Um, usually they're pretty good. I will, I will give it to you guys if there's any Germans watching. This looks really nice. It's got some proper circuitry on the top as well. So we'll have to find out what that is all about. But I'm gonna get this out one-handed. All right guys, it's a couple of days later. So I haven't really done anything else with this pack. Mainly just stare at it every time I've been in there. Um, I've taken it out of, the, out of the box. It's a nicely made pack. It is actually a really, really well made pack. Apologies for the noise in the background of this video, they're building over that side of the uh, the workshop, which is super helpful when I'm trying to make videos. So this little BMS board on here, I think it basically just is for the charging side of it. It's not for the um, for the discharge. I watched a couple of other videos about these batteries and somebody had actually taken apart the drill as well. And that's got even more sort of circuitry in there. And I think from the drill side of whatever you got it connected to, there's a couple of MOSFETs inside there which just basically turn this battery on or off or turn the connection between um, this battery on and off. The series and parallel connections are really straightforward. When you put it into the drill, it just connects these in parallel and um, or in series, which might be a little bit concerning. If one bank is higher than the other, maybe a cell goes down or something like that, you could get a load of current going across. I wonder if they've had any issues with that. But other than that, it doesn't look like it does any balancing. I mean, I'm not an expert, but there's no big resistors or anything on there. I think this just communicates with the charger. And if the temperature starts to go up or it's up before you've plugged it into the charger, then it just won't charge. So I think it's something to do with this ID pin. You've got a connector labeled T and a connector labeled ID. So anyway, if anyone's bothered to reverse engineer it, then let me know in the comments or whatever. But other than that, if you kind of discard this BMS, you've actually got yourself a nice little pack of 10 cells and you can connect them you know, in series or parallel, which is quite, that's quite good for a start because then it makes it flexible for different things, like using it in that heater, or you could use it um, as a 10 cell pack in an e-bike. Remember, you probably need more than one of these. But if you think about it, these are 30 quid each. So two of these, you could have 36 volts, five amp hours, it'd probably get you 10 miles on an e-bike, maybe more if you're pedaling as well. So this is starting to get pretty interesting for kind of, you know, small projects and stuff. Because if you look at the individual cell costs for the Samsung 25R, then, I mean, according to this website, Fogstar, which is where I've been getting my cells from, um, £3.79. So, you know, so 10 of those is like £37.90, probably plus shipping. And, you know, that's just for the cells. You've still got to weld them together. And this has actually got some nice, pretty high current looking welds on there. Can you see that? Switch on the final negatives and the final positives. See that one? Yeah, that one there. Yeah, nice chunky bit of nickel on that. So what I would probably do is just rip that off and just put a proper BMS on there. Or if you've got two packs, you know, one BMS for two packs, or you could have a BMS for each pack if you really wanted to, because a lot of these BMSs you can connect in parallel. 
not a good idea to do in series, um, but you can do them in parallel. Anyway, that's mostly it for this one, guys. Olive sent me another ridiculous torch, this S2R thing, which is pretty insane. And this actually runs on an 18650, so which is quite good. So the runtime should be a lot longer than that uh, than that other one that I showed you in the other video. So that's pretty cool. Go and check that out. There's a link in the description. Also, which is pretty handy, they sent me one of these. Like a little keyring torch. It reminds me of those one of those little um, maglite things from back in the day with the you know that run off the um, the AAA cell and um, just had this horrible little you know energy waster on the top of it and it never really kicked out much light. But this thing is insane. That is so crazy. And at the moment they're doing some promotion where you can basically just register on their website and get one for free. <laughs> so that's pretty good. You've got to pay the shipping though. So go check that out. I'll leave all the links in the description. But as I've said before, I like working with brands that do decent stuff and stuff that I'd actually use myself, so go check them out. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Go and subscribe and like and do the usual stuff. Also follow me on Instagram and all the other socials so you can see what I'm up to when I'm not on YouTube. So I'll catch you in the next one.